Oh my god, hey! My name is Mickey Joe, and welcome back to my theatre-themed YouTube channel. Today, I am at the Vaudeville Theatre in London, where Six the Musical is playing to meet one of its new cast members. You may know her from the Pro Shot of Heathers, the UK tour of the SpongeBob musical, or Dancing Down the Aisles of Tesco on TikTok. I am, of course, talking about the one and only Hannah Lowther. I love that you're wearing pink and blue on for Howard and Parr. You know, I didn't even, I didn't even think about that. I was thinking like, what would be like a cute, vibey Kidding, Howard, outfit. And, six. and you're so wearing six. So on brand. We're here at the Vaudeville Theatre, yes. backstage in the lovely, is this the dressing room for all of the swings? Um, this is the uh, alternate dressing room. So mm -hmm. me, Naomi and Gabs are here and then Meg and Nat are upstairs. Amazing, amazing. So talk us through what your day is like at six or what a day can be like at six. Well, a two show day, we get here at around, if the show's at f what time? We actually have a list up there of all the show times because I always forget. We do warm up all together downstairs for half an hour. We do parish notes. And there's a little break if we're not doing any like working notes. And then the wig and costume calls begin. And they're quite extensive. Like it's giving, I keep saying it's giving <laughs> military operation, uh -huh. um, which is fitting if we all get have to sign up for the military or whatever <laughs> it is that <laughs> is happening. I don't You'll know. You'll be ready. I'll be so ready. I'll In be a Gabriella like, Slade costume. Boom, 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 boom. Camp Rock or something like that. I think Aragon's costume would be best if we were to go to war. Yeah. Have you um, had costume related injuries yet? Because I've heard this from previous queens. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think actually it's the Aragon costume which causes the most because it is so spiky. That's what I've heard, the armadillo. <laughs> the armadillo. Yeah, it gets caught everywhere. Wig calls, costume calls, and it's different depending on what queen you are. I never remember. I just go very strictly by the list. Um, and then the show starts. So if you're on, you go on and do the show. If you're not, you sit back here playing double mm -hmm. or <laughs> watching the show, going over bits and bobs. So for people who may not know, mm -hmm. you're one of the alternates at six, predominantly covering two of the queens, mm -hmm. covering Howard and Parr. Yes. And is there a possibility that that may expand down the line? Yeah, we are all now learning a third cover for like emergency yeah. situation. So I'm doing Berlin. Nice. So that's what I spend a bit of my time kind of learning. But it's mm -hmm. weird. I was saying to yesterday how much of the show how much of the other parts you pick up just by knowing the show? Yeah. And she does this big kind of speech, and I thought, oh, God, I've not sat down and learned that, and I don't even know where my script is anymore. But actually, I've heard it enough times now that I just know it. It's weird. Yeah. Obviously, you did Dance Captain at mm -hmm. Heather's, like having to be aware of what everyone's doing. Is it easier in a way or harder to do something where there's so much symmetry between the parts, or does that make it more confusing because there's less of a distinct difference between what you're doing? I found this a lot harder because it's so non-stop. In Heather's, we had chance to, you know, you do the opening, you do the big section at the start, and then you go off, you check your where I'm going next, and if it's a cut show, you're like, right, I'm doing that line, I'm taking that, and, I'm, and then yeah. you do it. Whereas with this, the show starts, and it's essentially non-stop for... 75 minutes 75 of adrenaline. 75 minutes, yeah. which is amazing, but you don't have a chance... Where sometimes you'd be like, oh, I've got a big song in Act 2, so I'm just going to go over my harmony lines in the interval. And you stood there waiting for the show to start, and you think, oh, gosh, I'm not going to have any chance to just double-check I've got that high note in me today or something, so you just have to go for it. But, yeah, I found it harder because it is very mil military yeah. um, in terms of your numbers and the formations and stuff. Like, we all have to... Because it is so specific it is and the dance style is so specific and the choreography by Carrie Ann is so amazing yeah. um, that if you're like slightly on the wrong mark or it, it looks off yeah. Um, so yeah I've definitely found this harder and also I found it hard because Howard and Parr are right next to each other five and six and so a lot of the time it's just the smallest changes rather than like doing five and one or five and two or something I remember in the rehearsal process I had a moment of being like I thought I was meant to be good at being a swing and now I don't know if I am and I was having a bit of a crisis, but... I feel like once you've done this, I feel like you can you can uh, swing anything now. Hopefully. Like, Hannah Nowther, how do you stay present doing like a West End run, back-to-back -back shows? Like, how do you stay focused? Pred subscription. <laughs> <laughs> All jokes aside, being rejected for your looks legit sounds really rough. Sorry, that's a quote from the show. Oh, sorry. I try to just 
watch the show as much as possible and like mm. keep it fresh oh my god I actually don't know how do I stay present maybe I'm not present goals for 24 <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> goals for 24 stay more present so going then all the way back because I didn't know this about you straight away mm -hmm. um is that you were a child actor <gasps> doing exposed <laughs> doing all those shows. I feel like you did like like at least like three of like the big four of the of the kid roles yeah. in the West End shows so you did Sound of Music yeah you did Oliver, is that right? Yeah. You did Oliver and uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Okay, research. And actually, fun fact, I auditioned for Mary Poppins first oh. and I didn't get it and I was heartbroken. And I remember my mum being like, Hannah, like, if you if you are going to like be this badly affected every time, then I don't know if we should keep going. I, so I was like, no, no, no. I'm How gonna... old were you at this age? <laughs> Like 10. At, at like, 10. If you keep crying. At 10, your mum was like, no, you have to suck this up. <laughs> no, but she was like, you know, we can't keep coming to these auditions if, you know, if you're going to. And I was like, okay, do you know what? I'll be fine. And then I auditioned for Sound of Music, uh, Sound of Music and then got to the finals and I didn't get it. And they were lining us up in the seven and I was literally like, do they want me to be a bit taller or a bit shorter? Because I can make that happen. Um, but I didn't get it. So went the next year and then did the Sound of Music. And it's weird because in that, in the child actor scene, once you do one thing, it just leads you on to the it's next. Like a bit of momentum. Yeah, and I think Oliver, that was the time of the TV show, so it was all like very exciting. And Rowan Atkinson was doing it. Obviously, Jodie Prenger, loads, of, loads of people. And that's how I met Rob Madge. Yeah, yeah. Because we were both in it at the same time. We weren't in the same team, but a crazy amount of performers today were in that production of Oliver. I was going to say Idris. Have you... Do you oh, know wow. Idris yeah, yeah, was in yeah, yeah. my team? Um, Natalie Kasanga and Mitch. Rob Madge, yeah. obviously. Hopefully Oliver's making a comeback, I've heard. Are there any other people <laughs> no you've comment. worked with since... Well, no, it's true. <laughs> are, there any, are there any other people you've worked with since who you had worked with before as... A, like, is there anyone who was, like, in the adult cast of those shows? There was a story. There was a girl called, you know, Jenny Fitzpatrick. Mm -hmm. I can't think of what she's in right now. She's in something. It might even be Oliver. She was in Oliver at Leeds. She yes, was in the okay. Leeds talking about, so she, so she you, was Aaron. in Oliver with us. Mm -hmm. She was just the coolest person in the cast, and I thought, this girl's so cool. I remember one day in rehearsals, she was wearing a bra that had, like, diamante bra straps, and I was like, this is the first time I'd ever seen a diamante bra strap. And I was just like... Oh my god! That, and I said to my mum, I was like, "Can I get a diamante bra strap?" My mum was like, "No!" So when we did Heather's, she came to like this press night, and I was like, "Hi, I just wanted to say I was in Oliver with you when I was ten And she was like, "Oh, why do you feel old?" <laughs> and for some reason, I told her when I was a kid, I really admired your diamante bra straps, and she must have thought I was an absolute loser. Um, Flash forward to the costumes in Six the Musical. Yeah, like, and now I have got diamante bra straps, so <laughs> it all makes sense. <laughs> it was meant to be. Coming out of that, then training for musical theatre, mm -hmm. and then obviously everything that happens with the world of TikTok. Mm. And this has been very well documented. Um, if people don't know, like, your story with the pandemic, at the height of that is getting mentioned at the Olivier Awards. That was crazy. And I didn't actually realise, I think actually Max Harwood, who was there, sent me a video and was like, by the way, they've just mentioned you at the Olivier. So I turned it on the TV, but they cut that bit out. <laughs> I was like, damn it. Um, and then the next year, I was hosting the green carpet yeah, which yeah. was like an amazing moment for me um so if they want to invite me again this year i'm totally available actually i'm probably not available i'm probably in six she's probably um, busy she's got a lot it's just been a crazy year you know everyone's on instagram at the moment being like me when i was 21 and i i'm, I'm like looking back at all my pictures over the years and i'm like wow these past couple of years have just been madness what was tiktok for you at the kind of at the beginning mm -hmm. when you were forging your way with it in terms of like creative outlet and what how do you look at it now because like balancing that alongside a career mm -hmm. it's many things in many ways it's like having a strong social media presence is an asset to performers it can also be a creative outlet it can also be like a decent like side hustle what what is that to you I think I'm definitely in a transitional like period with it at the moment mm -hmm. because I love teaching people about theatre and not teaching but like kind of just making people aware of it a lot of people don't take our industry seriously because they don't know about it and they don't get taught it and yeah. like there's so many people out there young people especially who've never even been to the theatre and don't even really know that that's a career path and I think to be able to especially with these Dear Evan Hansen auditions which is a huge topic at the moment yeah. To be able to kind of show that this is a possibility for you and here's an opportunity and here's a chance. Breaking down those barriers. Breaking down the barriers. Yeah. I think that's an amazing step forward. 
Um, but for me personally, I'm continuing just to create content because I really enjoy it. I mean, it's great that like the way you do use your platform, you are bringing young people into the theatre who will go and see shows, who will get excited about coming to see Heather's, who will get excited about like following a tour around the country, like coming to see shows because they want to come and see you in them. And I think that's really cool and that's a really great thing. Also, one of my favourite things you ever posted talking about the realities of actually pay as mm. an actor and just trying to demystify what is still very vague and not really spoken about within the yeah. industry. I think that was um, a really brave thing to do, but I had so much respect for you doing that. I, d I mean, I don't know if I've said it online before, but... I got a couple of, not nasty messages, but a couple of messages from people in the industry basically like warning me not to do that. And mm. that's the kind of gatekeeping that I'm talking about. Like you can Google how much your doctor earns probably. So like this industry isn't taken seriously for many reasons, but for a big reason that people, it's not transparent. And yeah. that's how also people get away with being paid hardly anything if not, if not. <laughs> nothing for, for some jobs. And it did disappoint me a little bit because I thought I can't see it being a bad thing you know but I think people maybe have this view that well you know because we're in the West End like we're meant to look like we're at the top of our game and we make loads of money and it's like well that's actually not reality and it's I think really it also, not especially it also, in London it's for some reason acting is always set aside from other jobs mm -hmm. like you're not allowed to complain about anything because you're doing your dream yeah and that's I like that. there's there's no realities that come with that there's no financial hardships that come with that because you're an actor on stage yeah. you must be making and millions because we love it yeah. and it's like yes we do love it we're very lucky but also this is a job yeah. and you you wouldn't tell a lawyer you should just be grateful yeah. that you're working on this case. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Like, we're here because we're good at what we do, and yeah. there's a paying audience, and that's a business. Yeah. Hannah Wowther. What is, that like... It, it? it does. What is, like, one <laughs> performance you've given on stage that you thought, I really nailed that? Like, is there one memorable moment? Oh, my goodness. Not my K. Howard debut. Let's put it that way. When I went back to Heather's mm -hmm. and went back to do Chandler... I mean, it might not from an audience perspective, but it felt good oh, yeah. from my perspective to like, just do it, just do it again. I think it was a completely new cast. So it just felt like there was so much energy because it was all new energy from people that I wasn't used to having with me in the previous cast. So obviously, and we've both experienced this, like navigating being public and like forward facing online, mm -hmm. I'm gargling for you some sounded reason. like um what's that character from Star Wars then? <laughs> you sounded like Chewbacca then. <laughs> no one good. Yeah. <laughs> but there is the negativity that comes through. And if you're anything like me, it's it's it can be easier to fixate mm. on that. And that will kind of discount ten lovely things that people say. I could be scanning through comments and I'm like, I barely even have to read these because I was like, cool, nice, lovely, wonderful, mm -hmm. good. And I'm like, this person didn't like my hair. <laughs> when you started with six. There was a bit of a moment because, mm. and I want to highlight here, because we as the press came to see the show in January. The cast had been in for like three or four months, which is quite a long settling in period. But for any show, we're not going to a first performance and saying like, this is everything that went wrong. That's why there are preview periods. Yeah. It's tricky in the social media age when you're going on for a cover for the first time, early performances, and you're like, right, I'm gonna have different roles, and this one does this thing, and this one does this thing. And so, what was what was all that like? I'm curious. It was really hard because I love the platform, and I love how beneficial it can be, and how amazing social media can be. Like, it's basically built my whole career. I'll be, I almost say that out loud. Um, but when certain things happen that just makes me think is it is it actually worth it and I think that was definitely a moment where I had to switch off I was lucky I was about to go to Portugal for a couple of days so I just turned my phone off and just didn't look at it but mentally it's hard because there's this expectation which I know I had kind of built up myself I purposefully didn't post this is my debut shows because I was like, I just need to get those first ones out of the way. But, yeah, it was hard because there's this expectation of you. And along with all the expectation I have of myself, I'm very self-critical and very, I'm a perfectionist. So one small thing doesn't go right. 
I'm like beating myself about it, up about it and being like, right, what can I do next time to like do it better? So when you've got people online saying nasty things, I tried not to look at it too much, but like it wasn't great. Yeah. It kind of just makes you think, why am I, why have I worked so hard to get to this point of my acting career to then be cut down by people who know nothing about acting or know nothing about, you know, what what I, what this actually is. I mean, I personally knew that I looked like the one who didn't... Like the bows, for example. My Catherine Parr, very first bow, I saw a video and I was like, oh, someone's filmed it. I thought this is really cute. And someone said, Hannah looks lost and sad and scared. And I'm like, well, I was a little bit. like, But also, I'd never done the bows before because when we're rehearsing it as a, as a five or as a three or whatever, we never actually do it and then yeah. wait for the applause and then, because we'd never done that before. So yeah. I was like looking around just to be like, what happens now? And you've got in-ears in, you can't hear, it's very you can't hear show. the audience. Yeah. So they're clapping and you can't hear them. So it's, it, it's like an out of body experience and experiencing that for the first time and then seeing 700 phones pointing at you as well yeah. is so overwhelming. And like, I'll hold my hands up. I've definitely been like, oh, I love that bootleg of me. Like, I look really cool in that and shared it. But I don't think you need to hold your hands up because uh, the thing about it is like, if someone at a party was to take a nice picture of you from the cross room and be like, I look lovely on that, send that to me, mm. then th that's one thing, but that's still your prerogative. If someone takes a horrible picture of you and you're like, oh, I don't like that. And like, well, I'm going to put it on the internet and then everyone's going <laughs> to laugh about it. It's exactly the same yeah, idea it's so true. because it's still like, aside from the legality of it, it's still filming you without your consent. Yeah. And like, again, just because you're on a stage, living the dream, mm. it doesn't automatically make yeah. all of that okay. And I, I think like, it's just, it's highlighted how important live theatre is and seeing the full show and the full story, because you know, you can watch a bootleg of me doing all you want to do, but if that's not in the context of how I've played Catherine Howard for the rest of the show, yeah. then you're not going to really have an understanding of like where my character has got to 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 get to that big ending or if you just post the end bit for example of all you want to do you know you, you haven't seen the whole journey of that song and that's why live theater is so important because we are telling these stories and journeys and the mega six is just like the fun bit at the end where we're kind of in character but we're actually kind of just living our best lives like having fun you know there was a time when i was working at tesco that it got so bad that like i had to turn all my comments off and like you're trolling your tesco really badly I, I did a dance to um you can't stop the beat jerry mitchell posted a video being like here's the dance move do it and so i filmed myself doing it in tesco and everyone was like disgustingly horrible i had to like go to therapy i had to like turn all the comments off it was really bad and then since then i've been like do you know what if i can deal with that then i can deal with anything i also guarantee that's the best anyone has ever danced hairspray <laughs> in tesco people were like pointing out flaws of myself that I've never even realised and that's where it gets damaging because it's like someone was like her arms are way too long for her body and I was like wait I've never noticed that about myself and now I can't unsee it and like that's where it's the weirdest and things it, yeah and then it I don't know if you actually look deep into it it's like who <laughs> who's decided what length my arms should be do you know what I mean like who's been like that's the length of arms that you should have <laughs> Your arms are not your there are they are quite long I will admit no because your but arm like, span is the same as your height if you measure your yeah. arm span, it's the same as your height. So you've just got quite long limbs. Your arms there. are proportional for your body. I'm, t I'm yeah. here to tell you. I don't know I much don't know. about science. I know that one. <laughs> fan allowther. Do you have one like defining or like some really memorable fan interactions throughout your career so far? I think the first time I saw someone dressed as New Wave Girl, Izzy, um, she does the most amazing cosplays of Heather's. I haven't seen her recently in Six, so come on Izzy, sort it out. But when I, I came up from the stairs at the other palace and I saw an exact replica, she was more of a new wave girl than I was. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is so cool. I think you were also definitely a huge part of putting new wave girl <laughs> on the map. I don't know how many of those other ensemble tracks I could tell you. Like, really? there's, I'm not, Go on. there's a beleaguered band, was that Jacob? Was Jacob the beleaguered, beleaguered geek? geek? Yep. Yeah, good, because he'd kill me if I got that wrong. <laughs> A Midwestern surf punk was oh, that yeah. the new one? I didn't have one of those. No, yeah. Kayla McKnight. <laughs> yes, and she was. Was she the drama? Yeah, drama. Drama club, drama queen. Drama club, drama queen. <laughs> Did you have like a delicious? I know because dance captaining, like mm. vocal lines get swapped around and whatnot. Did you have, like, what was the new wave girl solo line? Oh well, I made everyone watch the 
filmed pro shot the other day on uh-huh. um, Amazon Prime and I was like guys really be quiet now because it's my line coming up and it's a uh, I've got like a tray go on recreate oh look some lovely Peter, Peter Hanna Hanna art. art okay and someone <laughs> <laughs> no but seriously iconic moving on to the Heather's time because yeah. this was huge like career milestone mm-hmm. for you. And obviously, again, if people don't know uh, Hannah's story, you were the first person to play all three of the Heathers in Heathers because you were covering two of them, like that was your track. And then because, I guess, because you were the dance captain, you knew enough of the show despite having not like rehearsed it. Like when you did Heather Duke for the first time, because that was the one that you didn't cover, how much rehearsal had you had before that? show i mean there was like an an article at the time that was like with only four hours rehearsal i was like four hours that i'd be lucky to get four (laughs) hours i like found out at three o'clock that it was definitely happening we got to the theater at normal time i think it was six o'clock for a 7 30 show ran the number ran the costume reveal sang it through with the musical director and that was as far as it goes so i'm like four hours where are they getting that from (laughs) four hours notice yeah maybe like half hour rehearsal wow because you're just hearing it and around it all the time well I just picked up on it and I kind of knew it without even realizing I thought I did and then it got to the start of the song hair the choked but the farm and she like slams the locker closed and I had a sudden moment of oh my gosh I've forgotten the words and I went (laughs) hear the farm she could not hack it and then I was fine but you know and you're thinking how am I going to get through this whole song not knowing the words but I did know it but sometimes your brain just gets the better of you and it's like Sabotage, sabotage, sabotage. Uh, But we got through it. And it was fun. It was scary. Right after Heather's Mm -hmm. was when, uh, um, or a little bit after Heather's was when Spongebob happened then. So for how much of Spongebob were you auditioning for six at the same time? Quite quite a while. And then I found out when we were in Norwich. (laughs) I don't know when that was, but I know it was Norwich. And then for the whole London run, I knew. Mm -hmm. And I had to walk past the six poster every day. And I was like, oh my God. And then Could you tell people by that point? Or I that told still... like my castmates, but oh, yeah. it didn't get announced till September. I want to say I don't think it got announced till September. So um, yeah, I it, I still kept it pretty quiet. But everyone at stage door because I'd started teasing that I was doing another job, yeah. and lots of people were guessing. And I thought I'm going to get fired before <laughs> I've even started the job because they were like, "This is top secret information." I was like, "I haven't told anyone. They just they know it's my dream job, and they're just guessing and they're rooting for me." I found out, and we were doing costume fittings. Everyone at stage door was being like, "Oh, so you're going to tell us?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm doing a panto. It's just like don't tell anyone. Like, just trying to throw them off the scent." Um, and then, yeah. It was nice being in London whilst that was happening because I could, like, go to the costume fittings and stuff and it was fine. Mm-hmm. But that was really exciting, like, starting. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Like, every time I was going to a costume fitting or a boot fitting or get my head measured for a wig and stuff like that, I was like, this is crazy. I have a wig question. Can we get a ranking of, like, from the faves to the what was that wig? Because I have thoughts. I love my par wig because lots of people are like, oh, I thought that's your real hair. And it's not. It's the I thought it was your real hair. <laughs> yeah, because it's so good because the root is, like, obviously got a lot of roots going on. Roots, darling. Um, I love the Howard pony, but then obviously that's, like, my own mm. hair under here anyway. I liked my New Wave girl hair. Mm-hmm because it was just easy and it sounds really gross but it didn't have to be that clean like I'm not one for like having to wash my hair every day and I could just like shove it up put a load of hairspray in bish bash bosh and then towards the bottom end I would say maybe like the Spongebob ones no tea no shade you were playing a computer I was like, playing a computer not, like it's not gonna not make me feel icon. cute yeah. there's a picture from when I started in that wig and then the end it's like goes from being this cute little bob to literally being like this I remember I it like what happened. having individual hair I remember it being just like a box was it actual was it like a blue thing it was like a blue it was a helmet wig yeah the amount of costume changes I had in Spongebob made me like never want to change my clothes ever again <laughs> and like just wear one set of clothes for the rest of my life I mean amazing like team of people you were, like, sorting it and fish. doing it computer then a fish and then a pirate and then a whatever oh good time good t- it feels like so long ago the things you dream of yeah. as a child doing the sound of music like <laughs> I will be on the stage as a sardine <laughs> <laughs> still if I may not the mm. lowest on the hair looks and this is not even against the wig I just 
it just wasn't it just wasn't the one which one are you talking about the snow white no! and the seven dwarves <laughs> <laughs> we we need to discuss the what the one in Wimbledon the one in Wimbledon, oh it was yeah. yeah do you know what a black bob is never gonna look good on me I've actually done Snow White before that as well yeah. and it was just it was worse but can you imagine it being know worse until that moment in my mind that would work did it have a fringe it, it did. did have a fringe and it was plastered all over London on posters <laughs> and stuff and I was just like what and I also in the poster I wasn't wearing a um. The, the headband, the mm. red headband, so it just looked like, I looked like Lord Farquaad. It was a little that, uh, yeah. Hannah Bowther, do you have like a go-to bow? Do you bask it? Do you enjoy the bow? How do you feel about the bow? I used to not even think twice about a bow until I saw everyone's TikToks being like, different actors that bow. Like the Dan Buckley. The Dan Buckley. Yeah. And then Dan came to the other palace and we filmed one together and I was like, oh my gosh, like, what type of bower am I? <laughs> I tend to do a bow and then like a thank you. <laughs> oh, but in six, like, we all bow at the same time. So yeah. it's kind of, you just do your own thing. What was the SpongeBob bow? We had to do like a move from our character. Oh yeah, because so like, Lewis was always doing crazy stuff. Yeah, he used to do like star jumps and everything, but like, I would just kind of run on and give you like a little computer and then a bow and then I'd go. Panto is no joke. Mm. It took me a whole month to recover. We had a good time and it was easy, the theatre was easy for me to get to, it was Wimbledon. I was just like, you know when you're a little bit ill and you're just fighting off and there was no time to recover. I also had some sort of like allergic reaction. At the time I had this allergic reaction, I think it was either to like dust or like my dog or something and I woke up one morning and my eye was just swollen so bad and I thought, I didn't want to miss a show because I I'm not I wasn't one for like calling in when I didn't feel ill. But I was like, what is going on? I'd, I'd had an allergic reaction to something, so I went and did it. Everyone's like, ah! it it was horrible, and I just had to like make up over it, and it was fine. Obviously, I'm glad you're well now. <laughs> um, but the idea of because it was Snow White as well, and going in and <laughs> Ruthie Henschel being like, no, she is the most beautiful in all of the land. <laughs> as I'm you're like, there, like, oh gosh, twelfth yeah. show of the week. <laughs> face swollen. It was crazy. Every single show was a two show day, which I know it doesn't sound that bad when we're talking about like maybe being like drafted to go to war and stuff. <laughs> but like in the Again, grand scheme of it, you, you'd be ready. 12 shows a week. Yeah. We do a nine show week here and we're like, <gasps> help. 12. Do you have that thing here when you're backstage? Like, is there a possibility you may get drafted in war? You may get <laughs> drafted in to go and go on mid-show yeah and it's happened before not for me not for anyone in this cast actually but it has happened previously where people have gone on mid-show and i can't i want it to happen I, like obviously i would never wish badly on anyone that i'm covering but like the excitement you would get from being thrown on mid-show you bet i'd be like tripod up <laughs> hey guys <laughs> they're so used to me now though but when i first started it's in any rehearsal process i'm like okay like when am i gonna have this conversation or have this thing of being like do you mind if I just film this? Uh, but they're used to me now in this building and they just see me walking around with my ring light and they're like, oh yeah, whatever. <laughs> if people want to come and see you in the show, we're here in six at the Vaudeville Theatre. If they want to, um, obviously you're not necessarily going to be able to share all of your performances yeah. in advance, but if they want to, where are you sharing those? Where can I'll people find your them. Sessions? I'll be sharing my performance dates on Instagram. I think most people just share them on Insta and maybe TikTok and... Yeah wherever really yeah, but go follow Hannah on all of the platforms yes, please. come see six at the vaudeville theater come see us and you know don't just come and see it because you want to see a certain person just come and watch the show because it's an amazing show and also it's a show all about just like supporting other queens and I think you should come and support all the queens thank you so much for watching this video I hope that you enjoyed make sure to come check out six at the vaudeville theater go follow Hannah Lowther on social media and make sure you're subscribed. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>